<clears throat> We've been studying about the cause of the suffering of Christ. And the last time we met, we studied about the result is that he made us a new creature, right? He made us a new creature. And we studied much about it. And today, we will see that he gave us a new home. Because of the suffering of Christ, the result is that now we have a new home. We, because of sin, we actually belong to the house or a home where the father of sin dwells. And that's the devil. And hell is a place for all who live in sin, who rejects the Lord Jesus Christ. But God made a provision for all who will repent, all that will believe in him, that they can have a new home, and that is in heaven with God. Okay? Now remember one thing. <coughs> Uh, we will be in heaven for only a short time. You understand? We are not going to be in heaven for a long time. We are going to be in heaven only for a short time. Like there is hell. Okay? Hell is temporary. Hell is temporary. Okay? Permanent is the lake of fire. So after the judgment, everyone that is in hell will be cast into the lake of fire. That's permanent. This is temporary. In the same way, Christians also have two dwelling places. One is heaven. Heaven is a place where everyone who believes in the God of the Bible, who have repented and believed in the God of the Bible, will, um, you know what will happen to them? Uh, they will go to um, they will go to heaven when they die or at rapture. <coughs> okay, they will go to heaven when they die uh, or at the time of rapture. So what is going to happen is everyone who believes in the God of the Bible, okay, will spend time in heaven. In the dwelling place of God in heaven after death or after rapture. Now, after the seven years of tribulation, okay, after death or rapture, okay. Now, uh, then we know, you know, rapture takes place and seven years of tribulation. After the seven years of tribulation, there's 1,000 years of Christ's rule. The Lord is going to rule. And he's going to rule what? He's going to rule the earth. Okay? For 1,000 years. That's the time where we come back uh, with Christ. And this is known as the Millennial Kingdom. Okay, and there will be a theocratic rule. Theocratic rule means God is going to rule. The Lord is going to rule. Okay, and uh, so we will be coming back from heaven. We are not going to be in heaven forever and ever. We are coming back with Christ to the earth in the millennial kingdom. This will be a new earth and new heaven. This will be a paradise. Okay. Just how the Garden of Eden was. Okay? And that's how the Millennial Kingdom will be. And will be here. And then is eternity. Alright? So, this is our... The new earth will be our eternal domain. We will be here on the new earth with Christ forever and ever eternally. 
you understand and so in heaven it's a time where we'll be in heaven after death and after rapture but after the tribulation as the lord comes down to the earth um, you know in the millennial kingdom will be there with the lord jesus christ for 1000 years and then for eternity so this will be a place where we'll be forever and ever just like the unbelievers will be in hell and then cast into the lake of fire will be in heaven and then come to this new earth and uh, we will be dwelling with christ forever and ever and this was not something that came easily it's easy for you and for me but for christ he had to pay a price he became a man he took our sins upon him he suffered on the cross <coughs> he died by shedding his precious blood was buried and rose again on the third day and made salvation possible for everybody who will repent and come to him okay this is so turn your bible to john chapter 14 the result of the suffering of christ is a new home John chapter 14 in John chapter 14 look at verse number 2 and 3 you know this verse very well I believe <coughs> we have studied this when we studied Revelation let Verse number one and two. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God? Believe also in me. Right? John chapter 14, verse 1, 2, 3, and 4. Maybe 1, 2, and 3. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God? Believe also in me. So what is Christ doing? Is he taking the glory that belongs to the Father and snatching it to a lesser person? No, he's simply saying, hey, I am God. If you believe in him, you believe in me because I am he. And that is a good study to study in the Bible where the Lord always uh, keeps saying, I am he, I am he. Okay, and if you look at John chapter 13 verse 19. Now I tell you before it come, that when it is come to pass, you may believe that I am He. You know what happens if you don't believe that uh, I am He? You don't have eternal life. So you and I, we are called to believe that Jesus Christ is He. Why? What is I am He? What is I am He? I am Jehovah. I am the one in the Old Testament. I am He. So I am you know, Moses asked, you know, God told Moses, hey, Moses, go and tell Pharaoh, right? <coughs> go and tell Pharaoh uh, to leave the people of Israel. Let them go. And Moses said, but Father, how will they, God, how will they believe? I said, just tell them. You know, I have said, send them. So the Moses said, Lord, uh, but uh, if they ask, what's your name, what would I say? So tell them, I am that I am. I am that I am. Tell them, I am has sent you. And that explained to Moses completely what God is. And that's why we read in the Bible everywhere, the Lord Jesus I am He. I am the living bread. I am the living water. I am the bread of life. I am the door. Right? I am the Alpha and the Omega. And so the Lord quotes everywhere. I am the first and the last, the beginning and the end. And the word I am is I am sufficient for you in everything. I am simply means... I am the most powerful thing that you can ever think about. I am the most compassionate thing that you can ever think about. 
all the good and holy and powerful and and royal thing that you can think about that is i am i am the provider i am the healer i am the protector i am your father i am the mother i am the teacher i am the uh, comforter i am the savior i am god i am lord i am he i am sufficient for you for everything i am the most powerful one so i am simply means the sufficient one for everything for you that's the almighty god hmm that's the almighty god and so let not your heart be troubled you believe in god you believe also in me so the lord jesus said i'm god believe me i'm he <coughs> in two in my father's house there are many mansions if it were not so i would have told you i go to prepare a place for you see god believes in preparing and that's why as a christian we should always prepare for everything right if you don't prepare for rain what happen then you will get wet your house will be in problem you uh, you know you, you know a lot of ladies especially during before the rain i don't know if they do it now but be, i remember as when we were kids before the rain my mom would go to the market buy chili and then dry it and then go to take it to the giron and make it powder and bring right uh, go bring dry fish and they store it during the before the rain and when the sun is still hot because after that what happened you don't get it hmm you don't get all those things and and becomes a problem now things have changed maybe now everything is preserved and sold but those days were different and preparation is very very important we all have to prepare we have to prepare for church don't prepare on sunday morning prepare a day before prepare for your examination prepare for your job prepare the preparation you know the most successful thing in this world the most beautiful thing in this world what you see outside as beautiful it has taken much preparation below otherwise you know nothing becomes good so a lot of preparations has taken place like uh, you know when the conference comes what do we do we prepare for we prepare through prayer we through prepare through pr promoting it we prepare in uh, arranging many things the lot of thoughts and lot of prayers lot of work takes place <clears throat> and then we come and thursday friday saturday sunday wow the conference was good but no we've been preparing for months so that these three days or four days will go good hmm and so god believes in preparing in my father's house are many mansion if it were not so i would have told you i go to prepare a place for you all right was three and if i go and prepare a place for you i will come again and receive you unto myself that where i am that he may be also okay this is marriage this is marriage the boy comes and is espoused to his wife and the boy goes and then he's preparing uh, the house for the bride and he's working and he's expecting the bride to be ready at any time and then he comes to take her back okay that's marriage that's preparation and so we see that god is preparing and so what he has prepared is a mansion for, let's look to we'll turn your bible to the book of jeremiah uh uh what verse is that in the book of jeremiah uh let me look at that verse for you 
you know, the verse says, <coughs> the eyes has not seen, nor the ears heard it somewhere in this. I preached about it in June, right? June 9th. I spoke a little bit about it. Mm. Hmm? 16, 17? No, 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 no. It was right here in front of me, and I'm, but I did not memorize it. It's somewhere in the 30s. Somewhere in the 30s. Google it. Or ch check in your this. It's about preparation. The eyes is not seen what God has prepared. Nor the ear heard. Hmm. What is that? Nobody is finding it? It's right here. Hmm? Okay, where's my phone? I'll get it here right away. <clears throat> First Corinthians two nine. Yeah, that also there. God is prepared. First Corinthians. As but as it is written, I has not seen nor your heard, neither have entered into the heart of man. First Corinthians chapter 2 verse 9. Isaiah. Isaiah it is, 64 verse 4. Yes. Is it? But as it is written, I has not seen nor ear heard neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. Let's turn to Isaiah. Yeah. Since the beginning of the world, man have heard, nor perceived by the ear, neither has the eye seen. O oh God, blessed thee, beside thee, what he has prepared for him, that waited for him. I think this is what I was thinking about. Okay? This is the verse I was thinking about. Yeah. All right. Isaiah chapter 64 verse, six, uh, verse 4. Isaiah chapter 64 verse 4. For since the beginning of the world, man have not heard, nor perceived by the ear, now, preacher boys, what is this known as? Yesterday we saw something. What is this known as? I has, man has not heard, not perceived by the ear. Revelation. Yes, revelation. Very good. For since the beginning of the world, man have not heard, nor perceived by the ear, neither has the eye seen, O God, beside thee, what he has prepared for him, that, that's a promise. Isn't it? Waiting upon God. And a lot of people miss that blessing because they get tired in waiting upon God. Waiting upon God is what? Serving God. Waiter. Waitress. You serve God. And then you'll see what God has prepared for you. <coughs> right? So, according to John chapter... 14 and 1 Corinthians chapter 2, God has prepared something amazing for you and me. 
And what we are supposed to do? We are supposed to wait upon the Lord. So three verses there. John chapter 14, verse 1, 2, and 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse number 9. Isaiah 64, verse 4. I think we cannot forget that now, right? So, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. It says, but as it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man, the things which God has prepared for them that love him. So loving him and waiting upon him and believing in him receives that blessing what God has prepared. Hmm? So what he has done, all those who believe, they will not go to hell. They will not go to the house of the devil because of salvation. Because of what Christ did for us. Because of his precious blood. He gave us a... And because of all that thing, the Holy Ghost gave us the conviction and moved us. And we believed in the Lord Jesus Christ and received the gospel. And all those who have received the gospel, to them what he gave? Eternal life and a home in heaven. Right? A home in heaven. For you and for me, it's easy. Just believe. But for him, it was a big sacrifice. It was a big suffering. It was a big pain. It was a big uh, crucifixion. Big suffering. I think, you know, what we must un do is we have to become more grateful to the Lord. We have to become more grateful to the Lord when we understand this black like, man. What am I? I'm good for nothing. I'm a sinful individual. But look what God has done for me. So now what am I doing, supposed to do? I'm supposed to wait upon the Lord. I'm supposed to. So he gave me a home. Now I'm supposed to serve him. A new home in heaven, not in hell, not in the lake of fire. Now I'm supposed to serve him in the best way that we can. We all should serve the Lord. We all should serve the Lord. Are you guys sharing the gospel to people? Maintaining a book? I forgot totally. <laughs> huh? Well, I'll ask you, after 365 days, at least... Write a fake story. <laughs> uh, do something. Get busy. Don't take it for granted. There is a blessing upon those who wait upon the Lord. So, uh, the result of suffering. He redeemed us to God. He made us a new creature. And he gave us a new hope. Now, we'll enter into our response for his suffering. Our response for his suffering. I don't want to dwell much on this. It's, uh, it's just given. This is, you don't need much of the explanation. Now, we'll study our, ex uh, under the result, the next point will be our responsibility. What should be our response? What do we do? Our response for suffering. Our response for suffering. Now, <clears throat> Hebrews chapter 13. Let's turn to Hebrews chapter 13. Hebrews chapter 13 and stake verse 12, 13 and 14. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 12 through 14. 
we'll see what the Bible says. How should be our response? You know, he gave basically, we can say he gave us two home that we don't deserve. One is heaven, right? And one is the church. One is heaven and one is the church. He gave us a family. It's a home. And we got to be thankful. A lot of people want to go home. Or they want to go to heaven. But they don't want to go to the house of God. Everybody wants the mention of God. But they don't want to go to the house of God. And that's a dangerous thing. Hmm? A lot of... You know the dangerous thing of many, many... You know what is happening in the world today? Among Christians, many Christians. Everybody wants to go to heaven, right? Yes or no? But not everybody wants to go to church. Not everybody wants to go to church. Do you know one thing? Many fathers and mothers, destroy their children. Many fathers and mothers destroy their children. You know why? Pride. Because they got offended. What happened to them? They got offended by a by pastor. I think two years back, there was two, two people, two, came, two guys came to church. And Monday they called me up. Uh, Monday they, and basically I know them very well. They came at the end of the service. And Monday they called me up and said, Pastor, we came to church, nobody shook hands with us. Now these are stupid rascals. Okay? They came to church thinking that everybody will shake hands with them. They came by the time the service was over. I still remember and they entered the door and the next day they're calling me to complain that nobody shook hands. And I know they were not uh, saved fellows. Okay? But pride. It's all about me. Now here, a lot of parents, mothers and fathers, don't understand the seriousness of the souls of their children of their sons and daughters. They don't understand that. Hmm? And the, the, the main thing is pride. I was not treated well. They didn't shake hand with me. They didn't talk to me. They did not give me the seat. Simple, simple things, okay? And um, Oh, pastor's message, he was hinting at me. I got offended. This brother said this to me. That sister did this to me. And this, uh, the, you know, uh, they didn't care about me. <coughs> the same excuses were never given before they were saved. Right? Before a person was saved... Imagine if they were a Catholic. Did the Catholic priest ever call you if you were sick? Anybody? Did he come calling you? Huh? He didn't even care. And people didn't even care whether he smokes or drinks, right? It didn't affect them. I remember growing up in the Catholic church and, and the priest that I used to go to church, he used to smoke publicly. He used to smoke publicly. And the people didn't care about it. And they still went to say Mass every Sunday. They were not offended. They still went. They would go for night vigil. He would do night vigil. <laughs> they would drink. And no one cared about that. Nobody were offended. Suddenly when they became Christian, God had mercy. God saved them. Now they started thinking that everybody has to be under their feet. And everybody has to be doing everything right except them. Does that make sense? Before we were saved, we didn't care what the priest did. 
We didn't care about the people in the church. But even if they were fight, the same, they will go to that same place. But after salvation, the devil begins to work more. The devil begins to work in your mind and in your heart. Because that's what he wants to capture. And then he starts putting lies. He starts putting uh, doubt. He starts putting competition. And then all these things will happen. This happens after salvation. Sad. Hmm? Now, <clears throat> if you are sick, does the pharmacy guy call you? Huh? Does the doctor call you? Or you go to the doctor? You go to the doctor. You go to the pharmacy. Does a teacher call you and say, where, where, why you didn't come to church? I mean school. The teacher calls. Parents write leave notes, right? Dear teacher, I'm here to, ex I, 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 I'm writing this to uh, inform you, kindly excuse my son and daughter because they're suffering from loose motion. They won't come to church, <laughs> won't come to school for two days. Right? Does the principal call and find out? The teacher call? No, you send leave notes. Now you're not going to work. Does the boss call you up and says, why? You're informing him before you that, right? Otherwise, he'll kick you out of your job. You inform him, I'm not able to come to work today because I'm sick or my grandmother died fifth time. <laughs> right? <laughs> But suddenly when it comes to church, have you seen how the devil works here? This is, this is nothing to do with anything else. This is the devil working in the heart and mind of mom and dad. And if we are not aware of these techniques of the devil, that's why God said in Ephesians chapter 6, put on the what? You know why we are having issues? Because we are not putting on the whole armor of God. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against what? Again, what is the wiles mean? Techniques and tactics. Against the wiles of the devil. Right? See, you, we don't talk about those things. Any, you know, when it comes to school, I'm the one who will write the note. When it comes to work, I'm the one who will make a call. When it comes to... <coughs> of um, sickness, I'm the one who will go to the doctor. When it comes to medicine, I'm the one who will go to the pharmacy. But when it comes to church, why the pastor didn't do this? Why that brother didn't do this? Why the sister didn't do this to me? Satanic. Satan gets your mind. That's what the Bible says. Be careful. Don't let the devil shift you. Be careful. Okay? And so what happens is pride. And then what happens is the mother and father decides. And mostly it is the mother, okay? I'm sorry, ladies. But you know, you know, I care about you. I'll, I, 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 you know my heart that I care about the church. I love my brothers. I love my sisters. But it's the woman who will always be responsible to take the child and the father out of the church. Okay? It's 80% of the time. It's the woman. Because Lucy with the fur. <laughs> okay? Anyone Lucy here? No, no. <laughs> That's a bigger problem now. Ah, Pastor hinted at me. No. Lucifer. Okay? Finds the time. Lucifer finds the time how I can corrupt this woman's mind. And he, and he starts putting poison and then gossip happens. Huh? Gossip happens and all these negative thoughts is put in the mind and heart. <coughs> and 80% and of the time it is a woman who is responsible for the husband to be out of the church, the children to be out of the church. And it's 20% of the time, the husband 
becomes the responsible for taking the family out of the church. Hmm? And, and who suffers? It's almost, like a, it's almost like a divorce. The children suffer. Okay? And then what happens here? The father and mother leaves the church and tells the child, look outside Sunday, it's raining. We cannot go to church because the mother and father doesn't want to say, we will not go to church anymore. They'll say Sunday morning, look outside, it's raining. That's why we cannot go to church. Then the next Sunday comes, look outside, it's very hot, we cannot go to church. Look outside, it looks like it's going to be extremely cold, it, we cannot go to church. So then seasonal uh, ex excuses comes. Okay? And the children are hurt. The children are hurt. Unfortunately, I've seen, you know, one guy got saved, he got baptized, and it just took a couple of weeks for the mother to take that child out of the church, gone. Didn't even think, what will happen to my son's eternal impact? And the second thing about excusing yourself from this, take the child out of a Bible-believing church and go to church that comforts yourself, makes you happy. But that's not God's will. So God gave us two homes. After salvation, one is heaven, another is the church. He gave us two homes. Hmm? <clears throat> so this is something we got to be very careful of. If we allow pride to come into us, and if we allow, and when the pride comes, this comes in. I mean, so where is that? Gossip. Yeah. I'm very much concerned about people who say, you know, well, you know, I don't want any problems. So immediately after church, I just keep distance from church members. I've heard many people say that. I just want to keep distance from church members so, so there is no problem. Why you want to keep distance from church members? So that, that means there is something already cooking in your heart and mind. We are not supposed to be keeping distance from, we are supposed to be fellowshipping. As long as we keep our hearts right with God and know that we are serving the Lord by fellowshipping and loving and praying, it should be fine. But if we allow the Lucy with the fur to come and hurt us and, and uh, nobody Lucy, right? Anybody Lucy in our church? Thank God. <clears throat> it's not wrong that this, I'm just making it's Lucy fur. Okay. So... What? <laughs> Who? <laughs> no, no, that, that, that's a very holy name. No, it's in the video. <laughs> okay, we don't want to talk about it anyway. It's nothing to do with that, okay? It's Lucifer. It's not L-U-C-Y. It's, it's Lucifer, okay? <clears throat> this is Lucy or Lucky? Lucy. Okay, anyway, so, we, you know, God gave us two homes, heaven and church. Heaven and church. And we have to be very careful. We have to make sure that everything is, you know, we are doing it right. What happened? <clears throat> okay. We have to make sure that uh, we are keeping ourselves. Because if you are not humble... This place will become a very uncomfortable place. This will be a very uncomfortable place for you, if you're not humble. Judgment always begins. I remember, when, it happened to me once. I was a new Christian. <clears throat> and um, and uh, something happened. Basically, I was wrong. Okay? Because I got involved with some of my friends in that church and started... Uh, nothing evil, but we were doing something that was not uh, appreciated by the pastor. And one day he was preaching and preaching and he made his hand like this and he preached straight at me. 
he intentionally he was not pointing at me he was preaching with his hands here and there and his hand came to me and he just generally he preached and did you know what i thought after church that guy was hinting at me look he was pointing at me he was doing this this i was wrong in his mind there was nothing wrong the problem was i was having that issue so i was thinking he was hinting at me in his mind there was nothing and many time it's because you know we wear this uh, if you wear the yellow glass you look around what do you see everything yellow, yellow. the problem the, the thing is the world is not yellow the glass that you are wearing is yellow. yellow and that's why you become a dirty fellow okay <laughs> so we have to remove that thing and look with the spectacle of the word of god and so we have to keep our hearts with all diligence right look at proverbs chapter 24 <coughs> keep yourself to hebrews 13 proverbs chapter 34 24 no 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 proverbs chapter 4 and look at verse number 23 Is that tasty? You almost finished the pencil eating it. And he's saying it is tasty. Verse 23. Keep. You know what keep means? Protect. Take care. Guard. That's what keep means. Okay? Okay. keep thy heart with all diligence for out of it are the issues of life why is an individual having many issues because the heart is not right the heart is not protected i feel i am being targeted by the preaching i feel the hand show towards me is because he is hinting at me i feel that he is against me i feel is the problem is my heart is not right i am not keeping my heart right and god's word tells me keep thy heart protect your heart guard your heart keep thy heart with all diligence what is diligence means with everything possible protect it guard it okay don't allow the devil to gossip don't allow the devil to lie to you don't allow the devil to say something that is not right keep thy heart with all diligence for out of it remember everything comes from there out of it are the issues of life so the problem is not the people sitting next to you the problem is i right the problem is not s and n the problem is i The problem is not S. The problem is not N. The problem is I. That's when it becomes sin. So what I must do? I must stay with the O. The Son of God. The Son of God. I am the problem, not others. not others i am the son of god i i'm sorry i am the problem so i need to take the i and put the o the son of god hmm so romans chapter 12 verse 1 to what does that say 
Oh, yeah. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Be not confirmed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Renew your mind. If you don't renew your mind, what happens? You get rusted. Renew your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. All right, come to Hebrews chapter 13, verse 12, 13, and 14. So now what is my response? I got home because of the suffering of Christ. Now what is my response for the suffering of Christ? 12, 13, and 14, Hebrews. Wherefore, Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people. Remember one thing, sanctification is a daily thing. It's a repetitive thing. We need to be sanctified. Wherefore, Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood. Suffered without the gate. Without the gate means outside the camp, outside the gate, outside your comfort zone. <coughs> Suffered without the gate. Let us go forth, therefore, unto him without the camp. We should be willing to take up the cross. The take up the cross is our pride. Take up the crosses. Well, I feel like I was not treated well. You know, if we would treat everything like the way we treat the church, we will not be able to survive in this world. You know that? Hmm? Well, I went to the store and they cheated me. They took too much money from me. So what do you do next? Do you go back to stores? Hmm? You know, I went to Smart Bazaar because I save money. You go to Smart Bazaar um, and you go there. You know, the beautiful thing is, oh, I want to say this thing. <laughs> um, I was doing this shopping in Smart Bazaar and what happens is you collect points in Smart Bazaar. And I don't, know, I don't think it's in the South, right? It's, it's, no, it's not in the south, but it's in the north, in, in the mall. And if you're in the, if you're in the north, you should do shopping there. You know, and what I did was I was doing shopping. I was doing shopping. And the points were collecting. Okay? And there were times I was redeeming my point like 300 rupees, 700 rupees, 200 rupees. And then I was doing shopping, like buying my groceries for the home and all these things. And, and many weeks and months, I did not redeem my point. So one day, I recently went for shopping, but everything was over. So I had to do this big uh, grocery shopping for one whole <coughs> month. And, my, and I brought everything, you know, all the things I buy from the smart bazaar. Diapers, wipers, and, and rice, and all the grocery things, and, and cookies. So my bill came up to 7,000 rupees. Okay, my cart is full. So everything for the house I bought once. So I don't have to go again and again. And for the whole month, I did the shopping. And I came for paying the bill. Guess what happened? <laughs> I gave my card to pay the bill. They asked for my phone number, they put the phone number. And my bill was 7,000 rupees. And my redeeming point was 7,003 rupees. I did all that shopping without paying a single rupee. I can't tell you how happy I was when I walked out. <laughs> I'm like, man, this is. But one couple of months ago, they hurt me very badly. <laughs> because I went there and I paid, you know, it was like 
<coughs> some 1,200 1, rupees bill it happened. And you know what I did? I did a GP. When I did the GP, my phone shows that the money went through. But their system is not showing the money came through. So now they're not allowing me to take my stuff out. I got really upset. Because I'm showing that, man, my money is gone into your account. They are showing, sir, we did not receive it. And, so, and they are not allowing me to take it out. They are saying, sir, no, no, no. We cannot, yeah, you know, until the money shows up and all. Then, so I say, what, what do I do now? He says, sir, no, they have to make a complaint. And then, you know, if, when the money comes, then we will give back to you the money. I'm like, man, for 1,200 rupees, I'm going to make a complaint and all this. I said, call the manager. I want to talk to the manager. The manager is out. He's not there in the, in the market. And the manager is not going to come. And uh, I've lost 1,200 rupees. They're not allowing me to take my stuff, what I bought. I have to keep it. I have to write, pay right. I got angry. And I said, forget it, man. I did not even write the complaint. And I said, forget it. And I left it with anger and I walked out. And then I did not go there for shopping. And I went to Delfino's. Every time I go for Delfino's, I get big pain. Why? It's too expensive. So what I did? <laughs> I had to lose my shame and go back to the Smart Bazaar. <laughs> okay? And I went back to Smart Bazaar and they recognized me and they asked me, Sir, did you get your money back? I said, no, I didn't get my money back. And I did not even complain about it. But God showed me mercy. And I could make a shopping for 7,000 rupees <laughs> without paying anything because of the points that I carry. But I, what I'm trying to make is, I still went back to the shop, even though they hurt me. Hmm? Sometimes we may have bad experience in the uh, bus. And we still, of course, many of, how many of you take bus now? Melvin takes bus. Joshua, how many of you take bus now? Hardly, right? What a life, man. We need to keep our stuff back and walk and take a bus sometimes, right? Uh, but, you know, when you go to the gym, sometimes we have this complaint. We, we have this complaint about how, uh, you know, people in the church are gossiping. People in the church are not uh, this and not that. And that's why we don't want to go to church, you know. But then, you know, people who go to the gym, who goes to the gym, by the way? Healthy people or people who wants to become healthy? Huh? What? You know, when people wants to go, some people are really fat, okay? Now, they will buy their gym t-shirt and gym pants, shorts and shoes and they are ready to go to the gym. <laughs> they look, they may, you know, and they want to go to the gym and, and uh, they'll go the first day, they will go on the treadmill and... The next day they are tired, they don't want to go. And a lot of people, remember, gym business is the best business. Because a lot of people pay and then they never go. <laughs> it's a free money for the gym owner. Okay, they pay 12,000 and they never go to the gym. They go one time or they'll go to visit. And then the gym guy is really happy. A lot of people coming out of 100%, uh, you know, 25% of the people don't come to the gym. They pay. It's like a donation home. <laughs> uh, but you never get offended by the gym because someone is too heavy, someone is too skinny. Uh, you know, every time I go to the gym, it smells like onion to me. Because everybody is sweating there. Okay? It really smells like onion to me. And, uh, and then I also smell like onion with them. <laughs> okay? Uh, because that's a, a sweat. And, you know, I cannot go to the gym anymore. And um, I just go to the walk now. Uh, I don't go to the gym anymore. Uh, but when you see in, uh, in the gym, people are all of different, comes in different shapes and <laughs> different <laughs> heights. But we don't get offended. That's why the gym is made, isn't it? That's why the gym is. And so is the church. Church is not a beauty parlor. It is a servicing center for all the meek, sick and weak. And we are all working progress and if we would understand that if we would, if we can be kind towards our school if we would be kind towards our school we can be kind towards our church also if we can be kind towards the supermarket 
we can be kind towards our church also if we can be kind in the in the you know our villages vicinity we can be kind towards our church also understanding keep your heart with all diligence for out of it are the issues of life the problem is not the church church is made by god for you to be there the problem is you it's i our heart is the problem it's not the church yes in the church there are people of different size and heights and different uh, this but that's why they are there we are all work in progress and we have to understand that anyway hebrews chapter 13 hebrews chapter 13 um, i will read this but we will take this up next time okay <coughs> wherefore jesus also that he might sanctify the people with his own blood suffered without the gate so what we do let us go forth therefore unto him it's a uncomfortable thing to do let's get out it's uncomfortable it's not a comforting thing so i need to get out i need to make peace with my brother i need to peace uh, make peace with my sister i might have offended them they might have offended me but we are family we go back and we shake hand that's why we shake hand that's why we shake hand in the church right uh, you know when you were a catholic the priest told you you know make peace with and then you did that you did that you did that you remember that yes. here we get out of our comfort zone we you know i can easily uh, easily find out who is not happy with me because the next sunday they will not shake hand with me I mean, our church members. They'll not come and shake hand with me because why? They're going to offend it, you know. And they will not shake hand with me. Like, oh, brother, huh? It happens all the time. It happened. I can see from that. Oh, okay. That brother is offended. That sister was offended. Hmm. And so, but we got to be making peace with brothers and sisters. We get out of our comfort zone. Look at that, verse thirteen. Let us go forth, therefore, unto him, without the camp. You know what the Bible says? If you are sick, what do you need to do? Call the pharmacy, call the doctor. But that's all we do, right? We go to the pharmacy, we go to the doctor. But you know what the Bible says? If you are sick, if there is anyone sick among you, let him, let him, call, right? Let him call. Why the pastor did? Bible never said that. Bible said you call. Yes or no? Yes. A pastor is not God. He will not know unless you call. <laughs> That's why the Bible says call. Right? You call and tell him. Now, of course, in our church, I, and I, you know, I, I put Josephine responsible to make calls. And if you don't come to church, she calls you. Right? And if you, and she will find. And if you, if somebody is new in the church. uh you know she will call when they come and visit she calls them and she tells them thank you for coming and i hope that you will come again and if they don't come to church that sunday or church members she'll call and find out why what happened and she'll say we are praying for you hope to see you again and if josephine calls it simply should be accepted as pastor called i cannot all the time call everybody but i have someone responsible and i kept someone and she will give me the information till she'll call me up and she'll tell me i call this brother i call this sister and this is the problem this is the issue and I, and i'm aware of it and i'll be praying about it so if she calls it's simply because i have assigned her to call the church member and they should consider that that's the call from the pastor okay people should know that <coughs> and so so let us go forth therefore unto him without the came bearing his reproach for here we have no continuing city but we seek one to come all right anyway so that's the thing uh what we have the the cause of the suffering of christ we have a new home we have a new home on earth that's the church and we have a new home in heaven the mansion all right and so we need to respect both we need to appreciate both we need to look forward to heaven for the day of rapture in the same way we also should look forward to the church every sunday if we are not excited about church 
we won't be excited about heaven. You know, people who are not excited about a church are very, very bitter people. You talk to some people who are not going to church, they are bitter. And you talk to them a little bit, they will always complain about church. They will always complain about the people in the church. People who never go to church, they will have complaints. They will have complaints. Bitterness has crept into their heart. God gives a new, new home. Let not your heart be troubled. God says, hey, no, no, no. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God? You believe also in me. I prepare a place for you. I'm preparing a mansion. In my father's house, there are many mansions. And if it was not, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. Hmm? And I will come again. And if I prepare, I will come again and take you to be where I am also. And I have to prepare myself here to be in that place up there. Why he is taking so long to come back? Because he is preparing. Secondly, because I am not prepared. How do I prepare? I go to the beauty parlor every Sunday, servicing center every Sunday and I'm not prepared and God says okay people are not prepared people are still not ready people are still not ready we have to prepare while he is preparing you understand a lot of Christians are street people without home <laughs> when God says hey I have a church for you go home you know people who don't have house where they stay they are on the street Railway station, bus stand, under the bridge. <laughs> and some people, even after getting saved, you can have a lot of wealth and a lot of riches. And when you're saved and you don't go to church, it's because you're on the street spiritually. You don't have the house of God. You don't go to church because you're offended. You become bitter. <coughs> God said, let not your heart be troubled. Your heart is troubled because you're bitter. Your heart is troubled because you're afraid. Your heart is troubled because of gossip. Your heart is troubled because of sin. Your heart is troubled because you're wondering what will happen tomorrow. And God says, no, no, no. Keep your heart with all diligence. For out of it are the issues of life. Hmm? I beseech you therefore, brethren, that by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Be not confirmed to this world, but be ye by the mind. Amen? Amen. As God is preparing for you a mansion in heaven, you and I need to prepare a heart here on earth in the house of God for the bridegroom when he comes, he should find you and me ready, prepared. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let us pray.